everyone welcome back to poe on the call i'm so excited to be here i am chris rivers and i'm mandy mack yeah and we are here with the amazing poe entrepreneur and so much more rosie boa hi thank you for having me thank you so much for being here we are so excited to hear your story learn some tips and so much more yes yeah do you want to start um perhaps at the beginning or the, where we usually start is what brought you to pole dance <laughs> ah great question so i uh came to pole dance 2012 um so i was in graduate school i just moved cross country actually so i'm from virginia that's where i am now and i moved to seattle washington to go to grad school um and i was in the middle of burning out like I didn't know what that's what was happening, but it was what was happening. It's like I wake up in the morning and then I'd go to school and I'd work all day and I'd come home and I'd work all night and then I'd wake up and I'd work all day. And it was even, even not healthy. I was doing literally nothing but working. Um, I was like, I knew that something was up and I was like, I got to do at least one other thing. Right. So um, at the time I had very little money. <laughs> um, and I was like, if I pay for something, I'm going to have to go do it. So I'm going to pay for something and then I have to go do it. Um, and this was, I don't know if y'all remember that, that gif of Janine Butterfly doing like the iguana walk down you remember that that one from like that pole studio with the red walls anyway vintage pole gif uh if you haven't seen it and uh I saw that I was like that looks cool I'll do that so I found a studio near me and I signed up for their six-week series like their beginner series um and I went and I could do nothing I couldn't do most of the things in the warm-up because I had like at this point no fitness level at all. Like I was working literally all the time. I was completely sedentary, couldn't touch my toes for sure. Couldn't do like a crunch. Um, so I had a rough time. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, like I, I could not do any of the tricks. Um, definitely couldn't hold my body weight up, but you know, I paid for it. So I kept going. Um, and also just as a person, I have I had the type of personality that doesn't know when to quit. Like even like well after it would have been a fabulous idea to quit. And like, I should have, I just don't. Um, so I kept showing up and I kept taking classes and I really fell in love, not with pole tricks, which was what like enticed me to get there in the first place, but with freestyle dance. So it was a studio, kind of old school. I feel like, I feel like used to be most pole studios were like, of course, you're also going to learn to freestyle. That's like a core part of pole. And I feel like these days, that's not as common to be like expected that everyone's going to learn to freestyle, but it was definitely expected there. Um, the studio is no longer open, but uh, yeah. So I really fell in love with the freestyle dance component and I'm not I'm not a fast mover. <laughs> I'm not athletic. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm a fitness professional at this point in my life, but I've never been like, a sports kid. So being able to like, not only move, but like I could move slow and nobody yelled at me was like, great. I loved it. <laughs> I say nobody yelled at me. I got some, some comments on a PSO piece recently where I did get yelled at about that. I was like, okay, that, that's fine. What's your opinion? <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what really drew it in, drew me into it. And that was, you know, low these many years ago, coming up on 11, 12 years ago. Uh, and here I am. I just, again, just kept showing up. Yes. Wow. That was a beautiful journey. You were in grad school and then needed a change and decided to take a pole class. I'm sorry you were, you underwent that with PS. So I feel like every time we interview someone, there's always at least one judge that says something like, what, really? <laughs> yeah, I. it's really interesting. And I think it also really reflects like what people's expectation and aesthetics are. Um, I think this particular judge, I think, really did not enjoy my piece uh, and was also very upset that I was touching my butt a lot. And I was like, it's a, I was given a piece with a theme of dominance and submission, and I have chosen ash worship as a visual motif. 
this was an artistic choice and it is okay that you don't like it, but it was a choice. Like I did it on purpose. So I don't know. I'm glad you noticed. I think I think that's how I can come down on that. I'm glad you noticed my choice. <laughs> Too funny. Um, it's funny that you said they mentioned something about the speed because I do feel like they like, for some reason, a lot of people like all the tricks, the fast choreo, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. crazy stuff. And it's that poor pole dancing is so much more. Yes, absolutely. Right. I think someone else mentioned it's a uh, sloth style. <laughs> I love it. I love that. But I, Too... I love me some sloth style, a hundred percent. Did you have any dance background or anything? Just nothing. I mean, like I'd taken ballet when I was a kid, and it had been like as you know, roughly traumatizing as it is for a lot of kids, right? Like, um, I remember being like poked with a stick because I couldn't touch my toes at that point. <laughs> And uh, so, yes, I had like some ballet de distant, distant past. And I had, um, I'd done marching band in high school, which I think gives you an idea of how cool and interesting <laughs> person I am. <laughs> if the fact that I, you know, that I, I went to grad school wasn't enough of a hint that maybe I'm a bit of a nerd. Um, and I'd actually, to continue on the nerd train, I had done fencing. So I was on the fencing team at college. Um, but yeah, I hadn't I hadn't kept up with it. So so by the time I was in in grad school, I hadn't done really anything for for several years. I mean, I'd also you know I was working multiple jobs. Like I had, I had to make rent, so um, I didn't uh, I didn't have a lot of time for extracurriculars. All right, I think it's so cool that you prefer freestyle too, because I feel like freestyle freaks a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. especially like non-dancers <laughs> <laughs> and i love that you brought up fencing because i've been thinking about fencing too <laughs> i've never you should tried. Do it. <laughs> that, that sounds like fun i'll have to that's right. a nice compliment to pull especially because it's very lower body focused um and also very power focused which we don't get a lot of in pull i mean certainly the way i do it i'm not doing a lot of power stuff but i'll definitely right. have to try so cool <laughs> so um what made you decide to go from just taking classes in pole dancing to actually becoming a pole instructor because you went to grad school <laughs> which I, I can't remember if you said what for but then you become uh -huh. a pole instructor that's a, such a big change it did so actually it was pole instructing was, was a side hustle so i went to grad school for linguistics um which if you're not familiar is the scientific study of human language um and i was uh every advisor's worst nightmare uh an interdisciplinary person so i really enjoyed like pulling in stuff from different departments so like um i did a lot of like grad work in like machine learning and epidemiology and causal modeling and anatomy right for like speech articulation and um I was, like a lot of computer science and programming stuff and uh I was really interested in my psychology and um, sociology and like really bringing in a bunch of, of signed languages, bringing in a, like a bunch of different ways of looking at the same, the same thing. Um, yeah. So I did, I have my PhD. I am technically a doctor, not that kind of doctor. <laughs> Do not want to me for medical advice. Please, we'll both be unhappy. Um But yeah, so I, I was working full time and actually I still do have another job, but I'm trying to do pole full time that would be that would be my preference um but something else that's really been a constant throughout my career and all the different jobs I've had you know besides like you know waiting tables and working retail like there's not a big component of this and that but I was really into teaching I really I love teaching I love figuring stuff out I love helping other people figure stuff out I love making things easier for other people as they're sort of acquiring new skills um and like like I said, like all my other professional work has been also around teaching to some capacity. So it just felt very natural, especially because I'd had such a struggle. And I was like, as I got more and more knowledgeable about pole, and as I started like just learning more about like other stuff. So if you're not familiar with the Seattle pole scene, Emily Sherb, the circus doc is up there and she did like in-person workshops and she is fabulous. Um, I think she's been on y'all's podcast, if I recall correctly, she's amazing. Um, I'm not saying stop listening to this episode, go listen to that one, but she's very good. Um, and like the more I learned, I was like, it could have been so much easier for me. It could have 
have been so much simpler. I could have had such a better time. Like, and then like, I would, I would see like other people like really struggling with stuff. And I'm like, I know, I know what you need to do to fix that. But I don't want to be like the person who's like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Look at me. I know everything. Um, so yeah, it was just like a very natural transition. And the studio I was at, at the time had like a, a, a program where you apprentice to be an instructor and it was it was a long apprentice. He was very involved, um, but I did go through it and I did get, you know, a lot of you know training and support and, and how to you know teach pole. Um, and it's something that I really love doing and enjoy doing. Um, and I really like helping people develop a better relationship with their bodies, right? Because like, again, thinking about when I started pole, I was one of those people who was like, I wish I didn't have a body. I wish I was just a disembodied little mode of light. And I didn't have to think about anything to do with my physicality. And that's not like a great place to be in <laughs> your relationship with your one and only physical vessel here out in the world. Um, so I love helping people come on like the journey that I went through being like, okay, I will tolerate my body to being like, okay, okay, we get along to now being like, all right, I love and nurture and cherish and respect my body. And we have a good relationship and we're friends. Uh, and I think that's just like, such a fabulous thing to help other people with. And um, I, a poll has been the the tool by which I made that journey. So I, my hope as an instructor is to help other people make that same journey, but also like the, 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 the poll tricks of the carrot, right? Like that's the, that's the thing that gets you keep coming and, 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 you know, having a fun time. I think that's funny. You should say about the poll tricks keep coming, but I, I did like on your website that you mentioned like having fun on the journey and like th I think that's so important and I appreciate it that you put that on there like I I think that it's sometimes that that message gets lost because um, we try so hard to get the trick. <laughs> yes and I love that you just mentioned about being able to teach them not only just tricks but getting to know their body and love their body and feel less disconnected with their body um i feel like as instructors oftentimes we're like yeah trick based trick based but it's so much more than that and it's nice to have that reminder <laughs> yeah and it's i don't know i got lots of i got lots of feelings about this um <laughs> obviously right um but i do i don't know i've i have noticed again like i've been doing it for a while i think i think y'all both been doing it for I think Mandy's done it slightly longer than I have. And Chris came in about the same time I did. I don't know if you've noticed the same pattern, but like as Instagram became more and more of a thing and there was this more and more focus on like visually what you looked like and getting like that photo and um, Skittles, uh, if you know her, she's a fabulous pole dancer in Colorado, calls it the Instagram minute, right? Like that, that minute of footage that you're like, it's so good. And uh, less and less focus on what it feels like. And I mean, that's, it's a thing in dance too, right? It's a thing in professional dance, it's a thing in circus arts, but there's uh, a lot of research actually showing that like the presence of mirrors, for example, in a dance training space makes it harder for students to learn things and makes it harder for them to be able to like adapt to changing, you know, environments. And like, especially if you're interested in performing, it is rare that you have a mirror that you can watch yourself in while you're performing. I mean, like lots of clubs, clubs have mirrors, but you can't just like stare at yourself and ignore the clients, right? Like that's not, that's not going to get you tipped. Um, yeah. So I, I do, I get it. I get that that is like easy to sell. Hey, here's what you can do. I get that it is like easy for students to see, like I couldn't do the thing and now I can see the thing. And it's a very like, sort of like easy to measure thing, but I do think that it's not the, it's not necessarily the healthiest focus, especially long-term, because let's be honest, none of us are getting younger, right? That's not how aging works. And like, there will be a point in your life at which you have learned all the pull tricks you're going to learn, and you're not going to be able to continue to do all the pull tricks you can do now. So what is going to motivate you to continue to show up, do your body maintenance when that's the case, right? If like your only motivation is I want to learn something new, I want to learn something new, I want to learn something new. What happens when you're injured? What happens when you have to spend time like really focusing on that relationship and you can't have that, you know, dopamine hit you've been chasing. And I'm not saying it's a bad motivation and everyone who wants to learn pole tricks should stop learning pole tricks. Like I teach pole tricks, they're fun. Everybody loves them. But I think it is important that like for everyone, for instructors and students, we think about like, okay, is this going to help me 
be a happy, healthy human being in the long term if this is the only thing that's bringing me joy about this thing? Wow, that's a very deep, deep question. <laughs> like I said, it's a good reminder to people because you're hundred percent right. Um, it's more than it's more than just training tricks and it's doing it correctly. So we have the longevity in it since we're doing something that is very hard to do when you're older. Um, so thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, one of my studio values, I have them written on like a little piece of paper on the wall is a sustainable <laughs> lifelong movement. So how can we nurture that <laughs> in ourselves and others? Yeah. It's too, oftentimes in Poe, especially with newbies, they're like, I want to do this power move. Like, I want to do a cat spin flare. Your shoulder probably ain't ready for that. So I know when I was stripping, I made so many mistakes and got so many injuries. Um, So I'm sure it's still happening, sadly. Yeah. Yeah, And it's, you know, especially in a field that like really prioritizes youth, really prioritizes newness and novelty. That's the pressure. And like, I get it. I understand. I just, I wish it were different, you know? Facts. That's why yeah. we have, you have your podcast and we have ours. So make it different. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about your podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my podcast is the evidence-based poll podcast. Um, and it is some nerd shit. I will tell you right now. Um, uh, and it's, I mean, I started it cause I was like, Hey, I want to keep learning, right? Like I'm a huge nerd. I'm always like, there's gotta be more. There's gotta be other people working on this. Um, and also to bring in people working on different things who have different areas of expertise. Cause there's like, you know, a lot of people will just say stuff. And like, when I was a new teacher, I just said stuff. I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, and I think it's really important that we all like continue to learn and continue to learn more. Um, so I really try and use that as a platform to bring in people who are working in the pulse space and around the pulse space and are collecting and curating evidence, right? And generally that means um, uh, when you hear people say evidence-based, they generally mean research-based. So uh, it's often phrased in opposition to tradition. So tradition is like, this is the way we've always done it. So we're going to keep doing this way. Evidence base is like, okay, we have evidence that if we do this, then this happens. So given that, what should we do? Right. So there's also a big movement going on in the dance world right now in dance science and trying to like, for example, um, include a little bit more anatomy training, even for very young dancers. And there's this evidence, right, that that helps dancers develop a better relationship with their body and progress faster. Or like the thing with mirrors I mentioned, right, there's a lot of research on that. Or um, I'd really like to get somebody who does motor learning research in on the podcast. Um, motor learning is the study of how humans learn to do things, right? So there's a lot of research in that area. Um, things like what you pay attention to really affects how well you can learn things and how well you can do things, right? So like focusing on an external thing, like the pole, um, is generally going to be more beneficial than focusing on an internal thing, right? Um, so yeah, and I've had, you know, lots of wonderful guests so far, really excited to talk to more folks. Uh, we've had a dietitian, um, you know, a lot of folks working in sort of the medical field who specialize in working with polers, uh, who are doctors, some of them. <laughs> The, the type of doctor that can give you advice on that. Um, yeah. So if you are, if you're interested in, in nerd shit and also Paul, uh, maybe you will like it. I absolutely love that. I love the combination of the research um, and pole dancing. Um, I'm going to have to check out more of those episodes and we'll add that link to the comments below for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you so much for providing that space to like, you know, innovate pole dancing and, and so that we can all enjoy longevity in this sport. Yeah. So much fun. I can't imagine how much you learn. It would like pump me up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I like that you bring up the like the tradition thing, because I, I remember when we were dancers growing up, like our warm up was like stretching. And I remember when like the evidence started coming out that stretching maybe it was not the best thing. And it was hard to like convince other people in the field <laughs> that it was not. And I think it still is a little bit, but um, yeah, it's just so, I, it's so important that we just keep evolving and learning um, to keep ourselves healthy. 
and also like people are already doing the work and it figured stuff out so we can we can just we can crib from them we don't have to figure it out ourselves we can yeah. we can use their information to, to do better yes it's so true i feel like there's such a lack of information in the pole industry mm-hmm. there's more now than there was like 10 years ago for oh, sure yeah. There's so much, I feel, there's so much more room for growth. I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited. I'm I'm kind of hoping Paul goes through the same sort of renaissance that circus arts did, where like we start to see a lot more research. We start to see a lot more like physicians who specialize in pole dancers. Um, because it is, you know, it's popular. It's it's still a niche activity, right? Like in the mm-hmm. in the world, there's not that many pole dancers, but there's more and more of us all the time. And dang it i i think we deserve support and information right, yeah rather than going to the doctor and having the doctor just say stop the activity yeah. <laughs> i feel like this information and this these educational resources that people are working on now it will help bring the conversation to light and stop this how do you say stereotyping on pole dancers because the only way to fight the stigma for anything is to educate people and bring keep bringing the information. So this should be interesting. Yeah, definitely. So All awesome. right. Wow. I remember you mentioned that you have a list for your class of like your poll rules, which brings us into like our next question. Do you have more specific philosophies added to that list that you would like to share? My poll rules. I am kind of blanking on what I said. Is that the code of conduct? You said you had a list on your wall and you looked to your left. Oh, it's my studio values. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know that you'll be able to see with the, the, right? Kind of. Now I got a filter on. Um, yeah. So these are, you know, when I was starting my business, right. Um, and I should say, I never planned to be a small business owner. It was not at all in the cards, but I, I'm very picky as a student <laughs> because I got a lot of opinions and I just couldn't find an online training space that like had all the things I wanted. So I was like, I'll do it myself. Okay, fine. Um, but yeah, so my uh, studio values are, first of all, inclusive, because um, I, you know, it matters a lot to me. Like, part of the reason that it's online is that, like, you know, folks who are immunosuppressed or have immunosuppressed people in their families, like I do, we can't be, we really still can't train in person. There's really few studios that are that are still requiring masking or have, like, appropriate, you know, appropriate to the degree that, like, it would feel safe for me to be able to, to train there in person. So online is a big part of that. Um, also, like, I'm queer. I've been excluded from places in the past and uh, I don't like to see that. So we we don't do that, right? <laughs> um, apparatus specific. It is a pole studio. I teach pole. I teach pole conditioning. It's all pole focused. If you want other stuff, other people. Um, evidence-based, right? Like the podcast, like I want to, you know, I want to keep learning and want to be like, okay, I'm pretty sure based on the evidence that this is the case so I can change what I do, which also means that things are going to continuously be updated, right? Because the evidence changes. Um, Sustainable lifelong movement and then movement as self-care because it should make you feel better. I love that. Do you have any other philosophies you would like to share with us? Yeah, that's a good question. I think sort of the core philosophy of, of a lot of what I do is that movement and particularly pole should make you feel better. Like, not necessarily good. We've all done Superman. <laughs> I don't know that like good is a good thing to aim for, but you know, if you were trying to decide whether or not you want to have or include or keep something in your life, like does it consistently make your life better in some ways and make you feel better? Um, and my hope for pole is that it should, right? And I think there's definitely ways to train pole where it does. Um, I think there's also definitely ways to train pole where it doesn't, right? So like if you are constantly getting injured, if you are in pain because of pole, something is wrong, something needs to change, right? Like that is not appropriate. That is not okay. That is not normal. That that should be addressed, right? Um, and I think that like that really, a lot of what I do is around like, okay, how can we make it feel good? How can we make it feel better? How can we make whole a part of our lives that improves our lives as a whole? So I I think there is a studio called Polistic, but I definitely do take like a more holistic view of health. And I think part of that's also because I did my... um um 
well, it's informed by, I don't think it caused it, but, uh, so I have a personal training certification as well. And, you know, part of that training is like, okay, what else is going on in your client's life? You know, what is their general load? Like, what is their stress? Like, right? Like you're just going to have less capacity when you're stressed, less physical capacity, even if you're not doing a lot of physical things, um, things like that. Um, I do not do nutrition. I do not do Ooh, excuse me. I'm not a dietitian, so I definitely don't do uh, anything like that. I don't do anything related to weight loss. I just, if you book personal training sessions with me, you're not going to get it because um, I don't do it. Um, yeah. So that sort of holistic view, where's Paul in your life? How can you feel better? Can Paul help you feel better? And I mean, I think for some folks at some point in the life, the answer is going to be no. Like you're, Maybe your pole journey's ended. Maybe you're in a chapter where it's just not going to be something that you do right now. Maybe you'll come back to it later. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think pole is for everybody all the time. But I think that if you are interested in doing it and you want to keep doing it, you should, and it should, it should improve your quality of life in general. Yeah, so even if you can't do pole, you could still watch it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, well, there's I... so many other aspects of pole dance you could do without physically being involved in it. Yeah. It's a nice reminder when you bring up that um, if it doesn't make you happy, it's probably time to get rid of it. I feel oftentimes as pole dancers, we're perfectionists mm -hmm. and we will keep working on something until we get it, even if it's not happening and we know it's not going to happen. We'll put our body through that that torture um and sometimes i don't know if it's for everybody but i've even stressed about tricks and combos like i need to fucking get this um so it's nice to hear that you share um if it doesn't make you happy get rid of it <laughs> totally. especially for something that's your fun hobby like why <laughs> don't, don't hurt yourself for it emotionally or physically exactly it's i feel like it's so hard to remember that sometimes mm -hmm. Right. Should be fun. <laughs> should be fun. <laughs> do you want to talk a little bit about the different packages that you offer your students? Do you only teach online at this moment? I do only teach online. Again, you know, um, it's still a pandemic. <laughs> uh, and, you know, obviously different people have different risk tolerances, different life situations. But like for me right now, I just I can't justify training in person, um, which is a bummer because Polcon is like just north of me. Like I'm in, I'm in Richmond, Virginia, which is really close to DC. For those of you who are not super familiar with American geography, um, it would be a short trip for me. Um, but eh. um, yeah, so I only train online um, and I do three types of classes and everything I do, you can just like drop in for an individual class. Cause I think, like I said, I'm picky as a student and like, I like to like sample a teacher before I'm like, all right, I'm willing to commit to you for, for a little bit longer. Um, so everything's available as a drop-in. I do poll classes. So I teach using a curriculum that I've developed called Poll Pathways. Um, and basically that is, I will teach instead of like a combo, I will teach a progression, right? So here is, you know, a set of movements and we, you know, each one is more physically challenging than the last. Um, and we will start with something that I think most people would be able to do, um, just like in off the street, not like most polars. Uh, and then we'll continue to progress um, until there's something like that's going to be a challenge for my student in class who's done poll the longest and is the most accomplished. Um, so I teach those. I teach, um, I just finished teaching, actually, I'm a little bit doing. <laughs> uh, two types of off ball conditioning classes. So I teach a uh, strength and conditioning class, which is body weight. Uh, I use, um, I don't really do a lot of plyometrics. Actually, I was going to say I do plyometrics. I don't. I try to keep it a little bit lower impact because a lot of my students are, are older. Um, but body weight, strength and conditioning. Um, and I also teach uh, flexibility, mobility, active flexibility class as well. Um, and those, you know, again, I integrate a lot of the evidence-based methods. So I also include exercises that are really designed to build like proprioception and interoception. We do breathing stuff, um, which sounds maybe like weird and off topic, but I promise it's relevant <laughs> method. I need that um, one. <laughs> it's it's helpful. It really is. Uh, and we also do, we, me. Uh, a freestyle flow class, which is a guided freestyle flow. And uh, we have like a nice long warm up. For those of you who are also personal trainers, that's the cardio portion of my, my curriculum uh, is the freestyle warm up. 
uh, and then, um, you know, we'll do different exercises and you'll get a chance to, to dance for each other. Um, yeah. And then all my classes are available recordings. And then if you were like, if you take a class and you're like, I want more of this, I have a monthly conditioning club, which is just all of the conditioning classes, all the off pole classes. Um, and I have it set up because when I join monthly memberships, especially at pole studios, I forget to sign up for the online classes. So I have signed you up for all of them. You get the links to the live and you also get the recordings. Um, and then I just launched actually my pole for pleasure membership, which is everything. You get it all. And of course, cause it's like, it's easier for me. If I know you're taking multiple classes, it is at a discount. So those are the options to work with me. Uh, and I've got coming up, um, just going to start bringing in some like guest workshops that are sort of poll related that I'm really excited about. Um, so yeah, keep your, I don't want to announce specific dates or names until I make sure that like, it's actually going to happen. Cause I don't want to promise something that like, and then it falls through. Um, but we've got the first one coming up next month and I am, ooh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> yes that's so super exciting oh my god we're gonna have the links to all of that below for all of you listeners and watchers i love that you offer those monthly memberships for people um because ever since corona ended there's not many online options so it's nice and i remember you saying that you do it for a lot of the immunosuppressing population which i completely love that um uh that's incredible. <laughs> uh, I I have also noticed as someone who's only been training online that there's there's lots of options than there used to be. And it's but now there's one more. If you didn't know, now you know. Right? Like definitely thank you for bringing awareness about that too. Like, you know, mm-hmm. there's still people who need online options. Yeah. Make the online options. We have online options too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, y'all do, which is great. Oh, man, I had a question. Uh, Do you have one? I have one. My favorite question. I forgot it. So you can ask. (laughs) Do you have this? I guess this is a twofer. Do you have a favorite pole trick and a pole nemesis trick? Mm, Good question. Um, I'll say my favorite is probably basic inverter leg hang. Um, Cause it's just like, when I first started, I was like, I'm never going to be able to do that. If I could do that, it'll be my life's goal. And spoiler alert, I can do a lot more than that now, but I still really love it. Um, I think it's, you know, such a foundational move. Like there's always something new to play with and work with in it. Um, yeah. And the nemesis trick, I mean, it's interesting. There's some stuff that like, I will never train. Um, well, especially since I'm alone at home, I don't have a spot, right? Like I'm never going to train iguana, just like period, not happening. Um, there's some stuff that I've stopped training or working towards since I started training at home alone. Um, you know, specifically Aisha's other than elbow Aisha, um, because again, I don't have a spot. <laughs> uh, and I am, you know, I, it's something that I would need a spot on to, to progress. Um, and then something that I just don't like, ugh, I I really don't like moves where you have a foot hook and then you extend through the hips, right? So like sometimes people will do that as an entrance to Marley or Bird, um, really don't like that, really don't like gargoyle. Um, and I think it's because I have pretty tight quads, so it's sort of like t- twingy on the knee and it doesn't feel good, so I don't do it. Yes. So interesting. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was like, I hate all of those tricks too. <laughs> You're too funny. Those are some of my favorites, but I, it's I know like, they are. Up that you don't do them because of not having a spot, um, which is a very good and perfect reason not to do them. And a great reminder because I don't, I keep doing them and I don't have a spot and I shouldn't. So it's a nice reminder for sure. Chris. You're too funny. We talk about this. <laughs> I know. We will talk about this later. <laughs> but I remember the question I was going to ask because you have a lot of awesome social media content. And I always wonder like how how creators do such awesome content and plan it and like continue it and stay enthusiastic about making it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I mean, I can sort of like go backwards from your your last one. I mean, like, um, 
it is the main way that people find out about my studio. So I am very motivated to keep doing it. Um, yeah, especially because like a lot of the advertising tools assume you have a physical place of business, which I do not. Um, so yes, in terms of motivation, um, I also like a lot of what I learned about doing social media, I've learned in other jobs um, where social media was a big component of it. Um, and I, I have sort of like a general monthly schedule. One of my big plans for June, so I, I've just finished the, the launch of my monthly membership. And one of my big plans for June is to get um, a little bit more ahead of uh, planning and scheduling. Um, but like for Friday, when I put out my podcast, I'll always do like a little like uh, audiogram, like a little snippet from the podcast episode to be like, come listen, this is what we talk about. Um, and yeah, I just try to mix it up. Um, and I have... I mean, my problem is always that I have way more ideas than I have like time to make because I could definitely spend my whole time like business related time doing just social media posts, but I don't think that that would necessarily be a great use of my time. Um, and I have, you know, whenever I come up with an idea, I add it to like a big file uh, in my, I use Notion to organize stuff. So I just have like a Notion page. that's like social media ideas I had one time uh, and there's a lot of stuff in there. So whenever I've ever, you know, heard for ideas, I, I check in there, but yeah, I mean, I've been... I've been teaching for like six years now. So a lot of it is just like, what do I keep having to say to people? Not having. Um, what is it that I think it is helpful for a lot of people to hear uh, and not just like super targeted, like one time, Wanda, <laughs> your knee was like this. That's not helpful social media content. I mean, that helped Wanda or whoever, but um, yeah, what's helpful for a lot of people to hear, right? Or like, what are other people like not talking about? So um you know, like uh, some of the content I've done recently about some of the research around improvisation and motor learning um, or some of the, the research about flow state, which I think we don't really talk about much in, in poll. I mean, we use the word flow, but like flow is a psychological state <laughs> that you can be in that there's been a lot of research on. Um, so, yeah. Windy answer. Uh, you gave us a lot of good information, but I'm not going to lie. I'm interested in that flow state that you just brought up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, oh, I'm going to have to look up the the re researcher's name. Uh, Mihai Kassens Mihai. It is not of German language or Germanic language derivation. Um, but yeah, so this is. So this is a state where you are completely focused on what you're doing. You're not really sort of paying attention to your outside surroundings. Um, there's like a, a lot of traits associated with it. So one is that you're not self-conscious. You're not imagining what you would look like to an outside observer, which like if you if, when you find that in your poll, feels great. Um, it feels good. It's intrinsically motivating. Like it's something that people will like intentionally seek out just for its own sake because it feels good. Um, and you can find it in a lot of different um a lot of different areas and there isn't to my knowledge any research on it in polls specifically but there is a lot of research on it um particularly in sports because when you're sort of like in the flow or in the groove um you know things happen unconsciously you react very quickly which is like what you want when you're doing a sport um there's been a lot of work on it in musicians um especially like jazz improvisation which is very relevant to us because a lot of the research on on improvisation um and like freestyling comes from jazz and jazz musicians. There is not as much on dance. And I would say in general, the dance literature tends to be a little bit sparser, um, certainly sparser than the sports literature. <laughs> there is nowhere near as much research done on dance um, or aerial um, or, you know, pole. There's, you know, maybe a couple dozen more researchers worldwide working on pole right now. Very, very understudied. A any grad students? Yeah. <laughs> Great thesis topic. Um, yeah. And I mean, basically the way that you get into flow state is that you do something that is challenging, but within your capabilities, right? So if you're, if you're trying to find this in your pole tricks or in your pole dance, I would say, don't try to put in the most recent trick you just learned. Try to do tricks that you can do, um, that you're pretty confident in and, uh, um, you know, maybe try dancing to a song that you are familiar with, but that has a lot of variation in it. So you really have to listen to the song and you really have to focus. Um, yeah. And it's just good for you. It just feels nice. Right. And like, that's what drew me into free dance was like finding that first state and being like, okay, yeah, it feels good. I want more of that. Um, many years later, here I am getting more of it. 
I love that. Thank you so much for elaborating on that flow state because I've never yeah. heard of it. Um, There's so much research that's relevant to us that we can just put in our little whole kangaroo pouch and have away with. Is it comparable to like the runner's high that they describe? Interesting. I'm not super familiar. I, when I've, I've heard, never like, felt it because I don't run. <laughs> I was in the military. We used to run like 10, 15 miles and I would feel it. Uh, flow state and I've never I don't know if I've been actually yeah I think I would say flow state because you said we're comfortable with ourselves we don't care about the audience and we're not working on our newest trick but things mm -hmm. I feel like the adrenaline part is like you feel like you can do anything but with running I was like oh my god I'm gonna have a heart attack with pole dancing I'm like I want more <laughs> <laughs> so not the same <laughs> that's probably related though there are probably runners that like to get into flow you're probably not to say it right <laughs> oh my gosh while you were saying it all i was remembering um i don't know what it was but the dancers that would like dance themselves into like a trance state mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's so interesting to me um yeah. super yeah. common in folk dances like um I think probably the most well-known would be the, like the Sufi mystics uh, who do like the, the spinning. Yeah. The twirling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So amazing. Wow. I'm going to go trail off topic, but we'll bring back to the topic. <laughs> do you have I'm an expert at that a specific um, pole grip that you use on your body and your hands, a secret concoction. <laughs> I do. Folks aren't going to like it. It's lotion. <laughs> yeah, no, I straight up use pole lotion. I straight up use lotion right before I get on the pole. Um, I use, uh, specifically, I use the Aveeno, like the cheapest drugstore, unscented. Um, and yeah, if I really have to stick, I'll take a shower and then I will use lotion and I stick great. That's very interesting. What kind of pole do you have? Uh, Chrome X pole. Oh my. Yep. I love how everyone's just so different. <laughs> All our skins are different. <laughs> uh, I mean, I should say my problem with sticking is that I am have very dry skin. Um, so like what I need is more moisture. Um, and I have not found that glycerin works, unfortunately. Like I know like everyone's gonna be like garlic rub, and it does not, it does nothing for me. Um if I have very sweaty hands, sometimes I'll use chalk or like I think Enviro Grip is like chalk and like a alcohol gel or some sort um and that is okay but like i do not like the tacky grips because then i can't slide and like i'm gonna assume most of the people watching have never seen me dance but i'm a very like slidey slinky like undulating sort of dancer and i really like to have like the ability to slide around on the pole i hate pole sticky pants hate them cannot stand them because i can't slide i'm just like mm -mm, not for me <laughs> I love it. So no silicone pole for you either. No, no, <laughs> no. I tried pole wrap because I do like dancing in pants, and it's just I I cannot move the way that I want to. Uh, <laughs> yes, it just reminded me. I don't think we we ever mentioned your website, Slink oh. Through Strength. Yeah, because you were just mentioning that you were slinking through. So let's mention that your website is slink slinkthroughstrength dot com. <laughs> That's my, my socials are all slinks through strength. I mean, I have my, my personal pole account is I think Rosie Boa PD, but um, yeah, mostly I just post my pole dance there. <laughs> Love it. I'm also a fan of the slinky movements. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I kind of, I don't know. Obviously any way that you enjoy polling is the correct way for you to do polling. Like there's no right or wrong answer, but it is always interesting to me, people who are drawn to pole pole and not Chinese pole, but don't want to explore sexy sensual movement. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just like, it is interesting to me that you're coming to an apparatus that is known for that. Like that is the draw for most people, but it's not for you. So yeah, it's, uh, and I think sometimes it's just straight up whore phobia. Not always, but I think there is a little bit of that there sometimes. I totally like agree. <laughs> I like how you mentioned that um, there are just some people who 
don't experiment as they should. Um, I've actually stopped following some people, especially a lot of straight male pollers because mm-hmm. do like these amazing dynamic tricks. And I'm like, yeah, you're fucking amazing. But can you offer me more? <laughs> Give me something a little more sensual, a little more, you know, I, different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially if, like all you're doing is dynamic tricks. Like there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like Chinese pole is like a much better fit for that. You got so much more room to do the dynamic tricks. And like, you got more sticks, you have more options. I don't know, it's just interesting. I feel like as pole dancers, we should try a little bit of everything to become well-rounded. I mean, find Mm -hmm. out like that's the only way we'll find out who we are as a dancer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which is why I don't, oh, one of my huge pet peeves. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I've got a lot of pet peeves. I've been in pole for a while. Um, is I do not like it when instructors are like, you can't take classes with anybody else. Why not? There is no one, there is no one in pole who can teach you everything that you're gonna want to learn. Like literally no one, even if they can do all the tricks, right? They're not gonna be able to do all the styles. Like you'll get different feedback from different people. You'll get, you know you'll be able to sort of watch them move and how they teach. And even if all you learn from an instructor is like, wow, I did not enjoy working with this instructor. You still learn something, right? Like, yeah, huge pet peeve. I hate it. I hate it when people are like, only me for my students. They're they're too good for you. Anybody else? I hope no one's still doing that. That would be awful. It would be. (laughs) We're in 20... (laughs) <laughs> ridiculous right I do feel like it is important for us to take from as many different teachers because it kind of helps us find our own aesthetic and our own movements mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah absolutely yeah and I'm you know I, I do this professionally and I'm always taking classes with different folks and like different modalities and different types of movement like not just pole so um it's good for you it's good for your brain in order to become the best teacher you have to be a, an amazing student <laughs> you have to always be a student yep i also like that you said that um even if you went to the class and you decided that it wasn't for you like that's still a learning because i i think that's you know, so important it's never like a loss like you still had the experience and you made you know <laughs> an opinion about it <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like when you, when you come in to pole for the first time, or even if you've been here for a while, you don't know what the, like the shape of the field is. You don't know what the possibilities are. You don't know what you're going to like. So you got to, you got to start like getting your scissors and being like, okay, I want that bit or oh, yeah, not that bit. Um, and developing your own silhouette, I guess. I don't know where I was going with that metaphor. <laughs> something, something out of paper, something. Oh. Too funny. <laughs> Let me see. Um, we didn't even touch on your competition. Have you competed or done any performances or plan to? Yeah, I am. Uh, I love performing. That's honestly been one of the hardest things for me is just like not being able to perform live in front of people. And it's okay. And I'm alive and it's fine, but mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have, uh, I've done a lot of performing. Um, I sort of like actively seek out opportunities. I did miss y'all's uh, showcase, unfortunately, but like next time it comes around, <laughs> I'm planning on being there. One of my students yeah. actually did it, but I was just, it was such a crunch time for me. I didn't have time. Oh, uh, no worries. December. Kimber? <laughs> Do you know Kimber? Kim- oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness. She- Kimber, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah if y'all uh don't follow her on on socials you should she was just uh a wonderful person a, a true delight um and a really good example of somebody who takes a lot of different movement modalities works a lot of different teachers and has like such a well-rounded movement life because of it so shout out to kimber you're probably listening hi kimber and if you message her she'll always message back she's such a sweetheart kimber's wonderful uh we are lucky to have her in the poll community Yes. Well, you weren't able to do our last showcase, but sneak peek, December winter solstice, we have another one. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna write that down on a notepad in front of me. Uh-huh. Um, I have I have been doing a lot of the the virtual PSOs. I'm especially after the last one. I'm sort of considering whether I want to keep doing them. So I don't. I don't remember if we were recording when we were talking about this, but I had. I don't know. Mostly into the free dance section. 
obviously. Uh, but I've had some sort of like, just like weird judge feedback. And um, I think like it was two ago, it ended up being canceled and like rescheduled. And it's like, I don't, hmm. I would rather have a more dance focused performance these days. I think that's what I'm looking for. Um, actually, I'm going to be an Ariel Angels free for fun uh, poll showcase on the 6th when we're recording this sorry the 3rd this Saturday I think it's not gonna come out until after <laughs> it's happened but um Ariel Angel's done those and that's like she's she just puts it on as like a community service and those have been a ton of fun um and probably I'm gonna have a studio showcase that's gonna be freestyle focused at some point I had one in March um and I do not have a firm date for the next one but I'm leaning towards September so yeah, I, I would love to have more online performance opportunities. That's another thing that I really feel has just like kind of gone. I agree. I've never heard of this, the Angels one you were just mentioning about that. It sounds like a fun opportunity. Yeah, let me see if I can get her, her handle uh, so I can say it correctly for folks that uh, want to sign up for the next one. Uh, she's also another person who's just... Uh, but just a delightful person. Uh, angel. It is, uh, yes. So it is Ariel Angel underscore, A-E-R-I-A-L-A-N-G-E-L underscore. I think she's probably shadow banned, so you might have to type it in exactly. Um, yeah, and it's the free and for fun showcase. Uh, the one on June 3rd, which will probably be past here, is Hello Summer. But she's done uh, a couple now, and they've been a great time. Uh, and obviously, they are free to attend and free to uh, participate in. So um, also, uh, shout out to her for putting those on. They've been a great time. She's a great producer. And that's a virtual opportunity? That's virtual. How did we not know about this? OMG, see so much going on in the poll world that we're not even aware of. Right, I was gonna say, thank you so much for making us aware of this. <laughs> of course, of course. Like I said, I am, I'm on the hunt for virtual performance yes. opportunities because I, I wanna get in front of people. I love performing. <laughs> and it's just, right. uh, it's been hard. Yes. We might have episode on that like really do the research and make an episode of these are all the performance opportunities you have virtually that would be right. amazing yeah i've yeah. never heard of that but that <laughs> makes me upset on myself <laughs> <laughs> all right i have a question about um your freestyle because mm. i um i also compete in the free dance um competition and i went in without a, a plan in the world of what I was going to do. And then I realized that some of the other people that were competing, they had like planned things that they were going to do to whatever song was going on. And I had never thought of that. <laughs> so I wonder how, how you do your freestyle. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so they send you, for those of you who are not familiar with how the PSO freestyle competition works, when it is in person, they just play the song when you're on the stage. So I've done that a couple of times. Um, which is honestly how I prefer it. Sort of that's how I tend to freestyle. Like I have no prior information. Um, and I think it's also like a really good <laughs> indication of like particular performers' musicality and understanding. Um, I have noticed as someone who has watched, you know, thousands of hours of freestyle at this point that um, so the way that the online works is that you get your song a couple days ahead of time when you need to submit. Um, and what I will do is I will, uh, if I know the song, I will not listen to it. I will sort of like pick up on the theme and try to like build a costume and around it. Um, and then I will just play it when I, when I go to dance and I'll usually do two to three takes, but I mean, it's freestyle. They're all different. So I'll just pick the one that has like the best lighting and where I'm most in frame. That's been an issue for me. Um, and if I do, if I don't know the song, I will listen to it a couple times from beforehand, just so I like get a feel for it. Like what are the lyrics? What is the vibe? Um, and I have also noticed that some of the pieces that are in the freestyle category are choreographed pieces without a lot of polish. And it is kind of easy to tell if you've watched a lot of freestyle. Um, and I mean, if you're doing that, I mean, they don't say you can't. They don't say you have to freestyle. That's just the name of the category. So I'm not saying it's like wrong if you do it. Um, I 
So in the most recent competition, um, it was clear that one of the judges had a strong preference for that and did not like <laughs> that I was freestyling um, and that I uh, was not. I think there's something that's like, you weren't on all the beats. And I was like, yes, I've heard this song four times total. <laughs> no, I'm not on all the beats. Um, and also, that's a very weird thing to do in a freestyle, right? Like, again, if you haven't watched a lot of freestyle, one of the sort of the hallmarks of a freestyle polar is that they'll sort of... Um, they will do some things on the beat when it's really predictable and then they'll sort of come off of it. And um, for me, something that's like, oh, this person is a very accomplished freestyler is that they can sort of come up, they can do some things on the beat and then they can come off of it and still be like in time with the music and still be having musicality, but they're not doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and that sort of like, particularly in the more central styles, that sort of like flow, that sort of like, tease almost because especially if you've watched a lot of choreography and you're expecting that on the beat you're like oh oh she's not doing it or he's not doing it or they're not doing it oh what's going on oh oh i want them to do something different and they're not doing it <laughs> um i think that's part of the the joy for me is like i love dancing slow to a fast song and then at some point okay i'll dance fast a fast song and then i get slow a little bit um, so I think that like the tension and that play and that dynamics to me is like the hallmark of like, oh, you know what the fuck you're doing when you're freestyle and like you are in it, you are playing with us, you have that connection to the audience, you got the connection to the music, um, and you're you are toying with us. Um, and that to me is like that's what I'm looking for in a real good freestyle piece. Um a little bit weirder to have in a choreographed piece. You will find it occasionally, but that's very much not the thing. Choreographed pieces I I notice tend to like draw on more like aspects of commercial dance tend to draw more on like gymnastics a little bit um you'll tend to have like stuff more on the beat you'll tend to have like more literal choreography like out of my head uh for those of you who are listening i put one hand on one side of my head and the other side of my head and then i did a head circle and you probably even without me telling you that knew what i was doing um but again i don't think there's anything wrong with it it's just a difference so yeah, so I I genuinely am freestyling. Um, I I don't generally have anything planned besides like I try to match my like makeup and costume to the the vibe of the piece. Um, yeah, and it's again you don't you don't have to. They don't say you have to, but it's a little. I don't know. It's a little sad to me that freestyle has become a little bit of a rarer thing in pole, and that's you know, the part of why I found in my studio because like. There's three big things that I really want in, in a pole movement experience. I want, you know, evidence-based conditioning. I don't, do not warm me up with static stretching. I will not be back. <laughs> like, I appreciate that you are trying. Um, you are many decades out of date <laughs> in terms of current practice uh, as a fitness professional. Um, I'm, I'm pretty picky about how moves are taught. Like, I really, I really want a progression. I really want like accessible things for everybody. Like, um, and like sometimes I'll just won't go back to a class because like what they did was just like way too advanced for me. And like, that's fine. Um, but just not what I was looking for, right? Not a good fit for me as a student. Uh, and then I want freestyle. Like I want the freestyle. <laughs> I want it to be there. Uh, and I really had a hard time finding all those three things together. So big, long rant. That is perfectly fine. I love that you went on that rant because you're right. Freestyle, I don't want to say like a dying form of pole dancing but it's not as practice as much as it probably should be yeah ah and it's i mean going back on the the research based thing um if you don't currently freestyle and you're like why would i learn freestyle you will learn movements better and you will improve your proprioception and your balance faster if you are freestyling regularly right there's a lot of um work on this in the dance improvisation literature there's a book uh that actually i'm in the middle of it might be in my books app let me see if i can find it um on motor learning and dance and like one of the main things that they bring up is that we have really good evidence that if you are improvising regularly and also take mirrors out of the classroom that's the other big thing that they're on um it really improves your um your learning your motor learning so Choreo is not going to help you freestyle, right? That you don't get the, the cognitive benefit, but freestyling will help you learn choreo, will help make you a better pole dancer. I'm not saying don't learn choreo. I'm just saying like, even if you love choreo, freestyle will help you get there. Uh, right. And I am going to find the citation. We yes. call it the sneak attack. <laughs> you feel like freestyling. You're going to dance and then you oh. just randomly get the trick that you were trying to do. 
Yes, absolutely. Especially on spin pole. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and the book I was talking about was Motor Learning and Control for Dance, Principles and Performers for Principles and Practices for Performers and Teachers, if you're interested. Again, nerd shit. Um, it's a textbook. You don't have to read it if you don't want to, but I want to make sure I gave you the citation. Yes, I love that. I feel like freestyling um, helps dancers not only get comfortable in their body, but find out what movements works for them, what tricks they can easily transition into, what works for their body and stuff. So it, we definitely I'll tell you what, if you are only learning choreo, I guarantee your teacher is freestyling. I guarantee they are freestyling to help develop their choreos. And it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. I told you I have a lot of them to only ever only ever expose your students to choreo because then they have to keep coming back to you for the choreo because they don't know how to develop their own movement style. And I feel like that is not treating your adult students, I hope you're working with adults, like adults. Right, so I, th I think about this all the time too, because I appreciate the authenticity of freestyle, but also like sometimes it's hard for the students to come up with the freestyle. So I was like, for a really long time, actually I was still doing it, um, doing the choreo and we'll do it to like many different songs mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll try to like insert the authenticity back into it because now you have to like figure it out for this new song <laughs> but yeah. yeah it's such a, a good skill yeah yes for sure yeah. omg i just had a crazy collab collaboration idea <laughs> a free freestyle showcase where we have participants sign up a couple months before and everybody who signs up we send them their song a week or two before the due date and then it's a showcase <laughs> or you can just play it live Free stuff. <laughs> chaos option or maybe like folks can choose like just surprise me day of i'm gonna show up i mean i i mentioned it is when we were recording this it is a thursday uh i have a show on saturday i haven't picked my song i don't know what i'm dancing to i love it something chaos <laughs> it's also way less stressful man like i have i have done choreographed pieces and i hate it yes i won't lie as an instructor to some, to them yes as a, an instructor sometimes like we i get so busy i'm like fuck i didn't come up with a choreo for this damn so i'll go into the class and freestyle and just figure it out as i go and it really does take out the stress of it and it mm -hmm. Comes up, I mean, for the most part, comes up with a fun, cool piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you too. Um. Uh. Of the unknown songs that you had to freestyle dance to, what was your favorite one? Ooh. Uh, it's a good question. I got uh. This one is in person. I got Devil, 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 Devil. Uh, which is just a fun song. And it's like, I, I mean, I, I've been pole dancing for a long time. And um, the, you know, the studio I danced at the longest, they had a different playlist every single class. I have danced to a lot of pole songs. I know what the old standards are. And I would consider that an old standard. Um, but it's a great song to dance to. And one time I did actually get um, a piece, a song that I had previously done a piece to. It was um, Broken Arrow. Let me see if I can get the song for you really quick mm -mm. Uh, which is also a fabulous pole song if anyone's looking for something to dance to uh is it not called broken arrow it's not coming up on my top of my life songs i feel like that sounds familiar yeah it is broken arrow by francis Novotny, N-O-V-O-T-N-Y. Also, it's under three minutes, which is good for a performance song if you were uh, uh, looking for something a little shorter. Perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah, right. I had to dance to John Mayer. <laughs> Schmaltzy. <laughs> no offense to if you like John Mayer. I, he's just a very, um, uh, you know... <laughs> I had never even heard heard this song before, and then I was like so happy I took my heels off. Mm. <laughs> yeah, not really a heels, uh, not really a heels vibe. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Oh, Chris, so you're talking. We're you're on a mute. <laughs> I'm dying to try a uh, virtual PSO freestyle or even in person, but I am so scared of what song they'll get me. Because if I if I don't like the song, I cannot dance to it. I mean, never underestimate the pressure of a deadline. <laughs> you are too funny, touche. <laughs> Um, and I like, I think again, if you are interested in, you know, improving your freestyle, uh, for folks who are, who are looking for that dancing to songs that you don't like, is really helpful because you find out you don't like something, but also <laughs> you begin to understand why you don't like something, right? Like what is the specific quality that makes a song, not something you want to freestyle to, right? So like, um, for me, something that I, it's interesting. I like songs that are very repetitive or not repetitive at all, but songs that have like a medium amount of repetitiveness, I get bored with because I keep waiting for the change. And I'm waiting for the change. Like, where's the change? Okay, there's the change. Um, whereas like, if I know there's not going to be a change, I don't have to worry about it. And if I know there's going to be a change right away, um, then it's not an issue. I think Mariana Trench is a really good example of a song that has a lot of changes by, let me see if I can get the artist for that as well. Uh, I am one of those people who hoards music. I have hundreds of playlists. I'm sure many pupil teachers can result. I was just about to say, we might have to include your playlist links below. <laughs> uh, um, the song I was mentioning was uh, Mariana Trench, M-A-R-I-A-N-A -A -A space trench, like the whole, uh, and it's by Dwara, D-W-A-R-A, and Cotton Palm, K-H-O-T-T-O-N, palm, like the tree. It's a good song. If you haven't listened to it, I'd recommend it. I love it. Yeah, I'm all over the place when I freestyle. Um, but yeah, we usually try to include freestyle at the end of the class. And sometimes we try to do a full-on freestyle class, but we found that students get really exhausted. Do you mm -hmm. do freestyle for the entire class? or? Great question. Yeah, so yes, but. Um, so the way that I, I structure my classes is there's about... A half. So this is the freestyle classes. And I should say they are one hour classes because I found for myself when I'm taking classes online, if it's longer than an hour, I get too tired to tra safely train because um, it's just you on the pole. And, you know, um, I mean, to perf be perfectly frank, since I started training only at home, I am not in as good of condition as I was when I was going into the studio constantly. Um, so for the warm up, I will have a rotating body part focus um, and predominantly focused on floor work, particularly for the warm up. So I'll be like, I want you to focus on the connection of your hands to the floor. So that could be like hands and knees, that could be down dog, that could be a, a plank if you're nasty. I mean, I'm not going to stop you from <laughs> doing whatever you need to get warm. Um, so your rotating selection. And that's about half an hour uh, and then a break. And then we'll have uh, group exercises. So, you know, one group will be dancing, the other group will watch and then switch. Um, and then we'll have like rotating dances where, where students pick the songs. So, yeah, you are dancing most of the time, but it is not. Um, I mean, I also intentionally pick songs, particularly for the warm up that like start very slow and then increase in intensity. Um, so yeah, you, I mean, you do get tired, right? It's a workout. That's part of the, that's part of the draw. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's all freestyle. I mean, I don't, I straight up do not teach choreography period ever at all. Uh, I also straight up do not teach combos ever period. Yeah. Which I think, um, is a little bit of an anomaly in the pole space. I feel like most people do both of those things, but no, it just, it's not what, uh, it's not what I enjoy teaching. It's not what I enjoy doing. And like when I've had to do it in the past for, for teaching at different studios, it's just like, not been, not been, not been what brought me the most delight. Uh, and I think that like your students can tell if you don't like what you're doing, like they know that you are pushing through for their sake. And like, I can tell when somebody's do that. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not enjoying this a lot. I can tell you don't want to be here. <laughs> so Oh my gosh. I'm so happy that you shared that. That's so honest. Um, and I also think that like, even if you don't, you know, teach combos, combos are naturally occurring and you're still encouraging them, you That's know? Cool. Yeah. And it's not like you, yeah, sometimes it's, you know, better for them to happen organically because then they're even more creative than, you know, what you could have done. 
Yeah. <laughs> I know. I yes. learn from my students all the time. I Every time, like, they do something that they think is wrong, I'm like, most of the time, it's like, what is that? Let's all do that. That was cool. <laughs> it's only wrong if you get hurt. <laughs> yes, very much. As long as you're not in pain, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say that. As long as you're not in lasting pain, <laughs> whatever yeah. you do, doing is probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I think, oh, do you have any plans for the future besides this awesome um, whole showcase that's happening this weekend that everyone will miss? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of plans. Actually, one of my big things for, for June's recording this early, early June for the studio is that I'm trying to like put together my plan for Q3, Q4. Um, some of the things that I've been thinking about doing is I mentioned the sort of pole pathways framework that I teach in. Um, Cause I mean, if I don't teach combos, how do I teach pole tricks? That's why I teach pole tricks. Um, so maybe doing an online self-service course around that is something I've been thinking about um, developing it in a way that like potentially I could certify other people to teach in. Cause I think it's a very accessible uh, way for students. And also, you know, I genuinely have mixed level classes, right? Like I have something for every student who comes to class to work on that's going to be challenging for them. And that is hard to do for those of you who have not taught. Extremely challenging to have a mixed level class where everyone can succeed and be challenged. And I think that this is a really helpful way to do that. Um, and it's also based on like biomechanics and, you know, my, my personal trainer training and like being like, okay, these things are all going to prepare you for that next thing down the line. Even if it's not necessarily like, obviously these are variations on the same move. Um, yeah, but that's, that'll be a while, right? Like maybe next year I make no promises about any deadlines, but that's, let's sort of what's going on in the, in the noggin. I love that you bring up um, that you're hopefully going to work on a future cer certification for others because we were kind of thinking of something similar. Uh, can I ask, what have you found? Because um, I know you're big with research. Have you done any research on like how that can be done? Are there any legalities that we have to be aware of for anybody out there? Because I know Body by Fran just <laughs> create on and I'm dying to reach out and be like, how'd you do this? Like, what do you do? But I know you're big with the research. Do you have any tips or anything? Yeah. Um, talk to a lawyer. <laughs> I am, again, I am one type of doctor. I, uh, I can't give medical advice and I can't give legal advice. Um, yeah. I mean, so right now, most I'm approaching it from a curriculum design standpoint. So I would say that that is if you are interested in doing it, I think that is a, a reasonable starting point, um, in particular curriculum design for adults. So adult learners, I'm just going to assume that everyone here is a reasonable person and is not trying to certify children as poll teachers. Um, but adult learners have a lot of things that make them different from children when they learn. And I think a lot of us, um, I mean, you know, we teach both to adults, but I think a lot of folks who haven't had experience teaching adults um, may not necessarily be aware of some of those differences. So like adults don't have a lot of time. They're very results oriented, right? They want to know what this helps with, right? So like when I'm teaching conditioning, I'm always like, okay, we're doing this conditioning exercise. Here are the specific pull moves that I know that you are all are working with and how this relates to that, right? So I'm giving them like a clear link. I'm building scaffolding is like the educational term. Um, yeah, so I would I would start with like thinking about it through a curriculum design standpoint, like how is this going to help? What are my goals for my learners? How am I going to get them there? And then how am I going to evaluate that they have successfully achieved those goals, right? Because um, especially in a certification, I want everyone who has a certification to be like, oh, I have, you know, certainty that you know this information, that you have this skill, that you can do this. And then if anyone's like, okay, what's included in that certification, they can look it up and be like, oh, someone who has this certification can do these things and is qualified to do these things. Um, yeah. So I, I would say, you know, that's how I'm thinking about it. Um, I'm not, not a lawyer. <laughs> talk, talk, talk to a lawyer about law stuff. Yeah, um, um, no. We're like, how do we get accredited? <laughs> Because we were thinking along the same lines of everything that you just mentioned. Um, but what we are scared of is coming up with a certification that someone's saying, well, this isn't legal. You're not accredited and stuff. So, yeah, that would be, I guess, something we have to research on our own. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you'll come across something in the future. I mean, I know that there are like agencies that do accreditation, like the, what is it, NCCA? 
I'm going to double check and I'm going to look up really quick and make sure that I'm not telling you the wrong thing. I'm going to have to write this down. Mm. Da, da, da. National Committee for Quality Assurance Improve Health Care Quality. Nope, that's not it. I could have sworn it was the NCCA. Yeah. Uh, the National Commission for Health Certifying Agencies, the National Commission for Certifying Agencies to accommodate all professions and industries. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I about it. One step closer. Here it's funny. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Uh, again, I have done no research into it besides knowing that they exist. <laughs> Wait, hey, that, um, they did us because we were doing the research and we couldn't find. <laughs> 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 I wanted to talk to you too a little bit about um, something you said uh, a little while ago about um, like adults learning differently mm -hmm. and how they they need to know like I, like. How do I, when am I going to be a good pole dancer? And then, and then also telling them that they need to enjoy the journey and have fun. How do you do that? Yeah, it's a good <laughs> question. I mean, the answer to when you're going to be a good pole dancer is when you decide you're a good pole dancer. Right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's so hard to... I mean, when I first learned, started, I wanted to know, right? Like, how long is it going to take me to learn to do X? And I, like, even as a very experienced instructor, I can't tell you because um, there's so many factors. And there's, you know, when you're going to learn something specific, there are a lot of things that are part of that. So there is the strength. Do you have the physical capacity to move your body in a certain way? Uh, there's the power component. Can you move your body in that way quickly with enough force to do the thing you're trying to do? So like with a spin, there's a power component. Um, there's flexibility. Can you passively move your body where it needs to be? There's mobility. Can you actively move your body where it need, needs to be? There's the proprioception, your sense of your body in space, right? Um, there is your understanding of the pole and your connection to it, right? So a lot of times I'll have students who are like super fit, right? Um, especially CrossFit people in particular. I'm just going to call y'all out. It's always you. <laughs> they'll come in. They'll be like, I'm so strong. And they'll go to climb the pole and it will be 100% in their arms. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like you are going up. Yes. But this is the least efficient possible way <laughs> to raise your body weight. And if you're doing like a four or five minute performance and you're trying to like be slinky and like make eye contact with your audience, you're like, <gasps> the whole time like that's a style of pole um that is allowable but it shows me that you don't have like the understanding of the apparatus to be able to move efficiently right so that takes time to build um and like while you are doing those things while you're building your technical skill while you're developing your relationship with a pole i think is a really helpful way to think about it right like you don't walk up to somebody and you're an immediate best friends unless you're in like second grade um you take time you get to know each other you sort of like figure out what you like and don't like uh and where you're compatible and where you're not compatible and while you are doing that i think it's really helpful to focus again on freestyle because listen you cannot be bad at freestyle. Freestyling is moving, <clears throat> to me, freestyling is moving the way you want to move at any given point in time. You can't do it wrong. You can't be bad at it. Um, you can feel that you aren't enjoying it, but you can't be bad at just moving your body with no rules, right? Um, so I think getting to the point where you're like, yeah, I can move my body with no rolls and that's allowed. And no matter what it looks like to other people, I'm good at it because I'm the one moving my body. Um, unless you have like someone puppeting you. I mean, I guess that would be, you're bad at freestyling if someone else is physically moving your body for you, <laughs> let me put it that way. Uh, and it's not like contact improv or anything. Um, I think that can be a really affirming space to be like, yeah, I'm doing it. I love that. Right, like allowing people to own their own movements. <laughs> also, don't look at mirrors while you're learning. That's my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I want to talk to you about that because I I am very conflicted. I 
um, have really bad proprioception and I find that when I look in the mirror, I am better. So for me, only in the world. <laughs> ah, is it building your proprioception or is it building your ability to integrate visual feedback? Because those are different things. <laughs> those are two separate skills. Yeah, I usually have a hard time understanding where my body is unless I can like see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like we but were I, talking about like, different aspects. That is an aspect where for you, it, you know, maybe needs uh, a little bit more attention. I mean, I should also say there's like a number of reasons why proprioception may be challenging for you. Um, it's related as pretty much especially to different types of neurodivergence there's like relationships with less than proprioception so um, not everyone is going to be able to build that skill as easily as quickly um, as as a sidebar if you feel like I'm so bad at it and I don't know why and that is to listeners <laughs> right but yeah there's so many tools and and I think it is appropriate too to to take out the mirrors too every so often at least to just have everyone feel what's going on for sure yeah, yeah. Because then you can feel it. Yes. And it should feel good. <laughs> well, I think that's all the questions that I had, Chris. Um, unless you have some more questions. I think um, one of the last questions we usually ask, because we talk so much about Poe and your Poe story, but what do you like to do for other hobbies and maybe for a muggle job besides pole dancing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I'll try not to mix my <laughs> my two careers, um, which is why you will be shocked to hear uh, Rosie Boa is not my legal name. <laughs> it's my stage name. <laughs> Uh, it is a type of snake, which is native to North America. If you didn't know, you should look them up. They're real cute. Um, yeah, hobbies. Uh, I, like I mentioned, I'm a big nerd, so I do play d and <laughs> I don't, I don't think anyone's shocked to hear that. Um, I'm really into gardening, uh, vegetable gardening in particular. So it's, um, I'm in, I'm in Virginia, which is a fabulous place to vegetable garden, um, I got, I got a lot going in, uh, that I'm very excited about. I got some, uh, somebody gave me a, a, a tomato, uh, an heirloom tomato, just like volunteer. So like they found like a little tomato growing in their garden and they were like, I don't want it. Um, so I have an heirloom tomato and I have no idea what they grew last season. So it could be anything. It's like the gosh upon of tomatoes. I'm very excited about that. Um, and I also like, uh, I was like a good video game. I'm, uh, right now I'm really partial to deck builder roguelikes, um, and if you're not a video gamer, that meant nothing to you. And that is okay. It's a type of video game. <laughs> Did you say Roblox? Deck builder. Roguelikes. Okay. R-O-U-G-E-L-I-K-E-S. Deck builder roguelikes. Let me see. No, I don't think so. My, our, my stepkids be like coming up with crazy games. I don't think they've played that one yet. <laughs> Bob, nah, it's a, it's a genre. I don't know that there's any that's like, super kid appropriate they all tend oh, to be kind of violent my stepkids are 16 13 and 9 oh it, that would be fine for them then yeah like um slay the spire is uh sort of like the i think it was the first one that sort of like founded the genre um but like i've also really been enjoying inscription for anyone who, who likes inscription that's i-n-s-c-r-y-p sorry i'm dyslexic i don't know why i keep trying to spell things aloud without looking at them with my little eyes uh, which, uh, by the way, if anyone who's ever taken class with me notices, I never say right or left, ever. <laughs> There's a reason. Uh, I-N-S-C-R-Y-P-T-I-O-N, inscription. Thank you for that. Oh, my goodness. Um, what else? What else? What else? Is there anything else you want to share with us? Any, um, God, what is any final words any advice anything you want to promote uh, yeah i mean it's um i don't know when this is gonna uh come out but um i just want to share about the organization that the my studio is supporting so one thing that like has always been my goal is to be able to donate one percent of my uh my income to um you know rotating organizations that align with my studio goals um, or values. Uh, and so for uh, Q2, which is April, May, 
April, May, June. Uh, it is Trans Lifeline, um, which is a really wonderful trans-led organization that helps out uh, trans folks um, with mutual aid and support. Um, right now they're doing a big fundraiser drive around providing commissary funds for, for incarcerated trans folks. So really fabulous organization um, that you know I've been fortunate enough uh, by the support of my students, thanks y'all, uh, to be able to support through my studio. And also I they just do great work. So um, plug in. So plugging Trans Lifeline, you should check them out. And if you have, you know, budget for, for mutual aid and giving, I'd, I'd highly recommend them. Thank you so much for doing that and for sharing a way that is really tangible that studios can figure out how to give back to the community. I love that. That has always been one of Paul on the Cause goals to give back to the community. So that's such a clever idea and something to look into for sure. Such a good cause. Do you have a link for that or anything? We could, I don't know if you sent that, but we can add that to our comments if you send it to us via email. Yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll send you all the uh, direct donation link to them because I, da -da -da. Oh, da -da. this episode is airing either the 15th or the 22nd of this month. Oh, perfect. I mean, because uh, it's, I mean, I always care about the queer community as a queer person, <laughs> but um, particularly in June, I notice that we tend to get a lot more positive attention from folks in the world. And I think this is a great way to express that attention. I yeah. agree. I feel we also not only get positive attention, but also negative attention too, because it is a month of celebration. The ignorant people want to bring us down. Um, so I feel, unfortunately, it's both ways <laughs> lately. Yeah. It's okay, translifeline.org. I just wrote that down. That. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yes. Well, yeah, and I guess um, when you said, asked for, for advice, um, did you have any advice for anyone starting off pole dancing? Mm, that is a great question. A lot. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of something succinct. Um, so I think the first thing to know is that it's very hard. Um, and if you fail, that is normal. Uh, but also that, you know, any qualified instructor, you should be able to tell them how you're feeling and tell them what's going on with your body. And they should be able to provide accommodations for you that help you be more successful. Right. So, um, as an instructor, I can't tell how you feel by looking at you, but I really want that information, especially if you're like, this hurts this, right. Or I feel like I can't do that. Right. Or like the, the creases of my hips are getting really tired when we're doing leg work. What can I do about that? So, be vocal, be proactive, and excuse me, <clears throat> I'm not joking up, I'm just sort of losing my voice. Be vocal, be proactive, reach out to, to your instructor. And, you know, it's hard, but if you're working with an instructor, we're here to help. We're here, we're here to make it easier. And, uh, you know, anyone you work with should should be more than happy to, to make sure that you get the support you need. I love that tip. I feel like that was to newbie pole dancers and instructors as well to take the time and be like, I can't, like you said, I can't see what's going on, but tell me what's going on. Yeah. 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 You're right. Cause there's a lot of times when students won't feel like they can speak up about what's happening in their own bodies um, for whatever reason. And it's always okay. And there's a way to make us yeah. feel better on the pole. Yeah. Hey, also you're, you're an adult. You're doing this by choice. Like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I am perfectly aware that anyone can walk out of any of my classes at any point in time and like that's perfectly fine you're allowed you're an adult <laughs> right that's so true <laughs> oh my gosh thank you for sharing all of this and your uh, everything about your pole journey and all of this great advice and the amazing resources this has been so much fun Thank you for having me. It's been great to uh, shoot the shit. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, goodness, I can You have a showcase coming in September. May I'm gonna. I hope we can participate. Um, we're gonna promote it because everyone we interview, we could we keep promoting for as long as 
we are, I guess, pull on the cause alive. <laughs> y'all have had some staying power. I want to say as someone who also produces a, a podcast, y'all do not know how much work it is. It is so much work. So uh, huge props to y'all for really being a, a pillar of the of the whole audio community, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you. Right. So that's why I always ask about like how people create content and stay on schedule and like it is so much work, but um, I love it. And I am so appreciative of all of the knowledge that we've gained from just talking to everyone in this industry. So I love being able to share it with others um, who may be going through the same thing, who need this advice. Um, we can help prevent making the same mistakes that we did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, well, I talked about how like evidence base is like, as opposed to tradition, but like, I don't want to discount the role of experience, right? Like, the people who have been there have knowledge and wisdom that it is uh, really valuable to get access to. I'm thinking about some of the, you know, some of the interviews you've done, particularly with, like some of the OGs uh, and like just like the depth of the experience and like what it was like in the 90s um, has been a fabulous learning opportunity for everyone. And I'd recommend if folks haven't gone back and listened to some of those episodes, you should. They're good. <laughs> Thank <you>. Yes. <laughs> Right, there's so many. You literally have to take like a month. <laughs> yeah, I think listen to them all. <laughs> I'm not right. gonna lie. I want to make an episode on evidence base and have you air again, so we can go into this evidence base and talk about it. I'm sure you have so much information on your podcast, which I cannot wait to listen to more. But I think that would be fun to kind of shoot the shit again. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I love to. Uh, I love to do that. Hell yeah! Yeah, and maybe we can have people. Um, you know, ask questions to um, mm. maybe that you can answer. Ooh. FYI, I, one of the other career opportunities that I did not end up uh, pursuing uh, was I was really interested in being a reference librarian. So that is way up my alley. <laughs> I would love to do that. Okay, get research. <laughs> Be still my nerd heart. <laughs> I love oh, I it. Just the glasses. That is yes. too funny. <laughs> I love this connection so much. Say, oh, oh, it's the sign off process, right? Right, we should get <laughs> ready. I had to move my laptop and plug it in because it was dying. I noticed you took a journey halfway through. <laughs> All right, it's been that kind of day. All righty. Again, thank you so much, Rosie Boa, for being with us. This was so much fun. Um, we told you it would be an hour. We are so sorry it went longer than an hour, but we appreciate the show. I had a great time. <laughs> yes, we so appreciate it. Um, I learned so much. You are an inspiration. I am so excited to see what comes in the future for you. Um, and I hope we can dance together soon or back yes. again. That would be fabulous. Yes. Work. <laughs> yeah hopefully we're gonna freestyle together soon yes and thank you for all you do in the whole community for all the inclusivity that you incorporate and for all that you do in the queer community because it is big it is huge yeah that's all righty y'all we gonna sign out all the links will be below in the comments whether you're watching on youtube or listening make sure you follow rosie boa on tiktok and instagram all those links will be below um goodness so many things virtual showcase she has coming in september so many cool stuff um her monthly membership um goodness check it all out y'all and a showcase that we can watch June 3rd, <laughs> which is after, before this came out. <laughs> hey, if you follow Ariel Angel, you'll you'll get to know about the next one. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to try to watch it. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Thank you so much for tuning in, y'all. We are Poe on the Call. I am Chris Rivers. My name is Mandy Mack. Yes, and we are. <laughs> we are pulling the call podcast. <laughs> and with Rosie Boa signing off. Well, I have one shoe on and one shoe off. If you don't have heels, that's okay. We take feet and sneakers because pole dancers dance in everything.
Like whatever your oh. aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>